Greetings hobbyists, I am Artisan Zavall and today I want to spend a bit of time talking to you about the settings that I find makes Blender the most productive workspace it can be for me as someone doing 3D design with the objective to do 3D printing with the designs that I make. What we're going to talk about is some of the more basic settings that you can change in your viewport and some of the other information that you need and as well as some add-ons that I find particularly useful to try and make everything as quick and as easy as I can to do the work that I want to do. So the first thing I want to do is change some of the more basic settings. So the first one that I want to look at is in the Edit and Preferences tab. And this is going to allow me to change some of the things in my viewport. So if you'll notice that I've, it starts on Interface, if you go down to Themes, and you found your way down into the 3D viewport, You've got lots and lots of things you can change here. Now, the first thing that I always try to make sure is that my active object is a really bright green color. And you just click on the color and you can change it to whatever color you want. It could be blue, whatever. I, I prefer green. But I want something that's very clear and distinctly different to these selected objects, which is normally in orange. Now, the reason this is quite useful, if I just come out of the tab, is that if I delete my camera and my light source, because I'm not going to use those, is as you can see it outlines everything in green if i just du duplicate that and have another one you can see that if i've got whichever one i'm selected on is green but importantly if i select multiple objects the one that is currently active and that i'm editing or anything that i select and do to do anything to is going to be green and that's really useful especially when combining objects i'll talk about that a little bit later so that's the first of those settings now if i go back in here the other settings again themes into 3D viewport, it's actually right at the bottom. So when you come into Blender as a standard and you've just installed it, this, the vertex size will typically be at three pixels. Now, for some people, they might like that. And if you like that, that's fine. Feel free not to change it. But if I turn it to three pixels and go into the vertex mode, you can see the vertex, the vertex is really quite small. Now, that's not a problem for a lot of people, as I say, but for me, when I'm going to be doing really minor changes to where those vertexes are placed and I want to make sure that they're joining together and I can see them quickly and easily, I like it a little bit bigger. So if I go back into the preferences again, 3D viewport, all the way down, I normally like my vertex size to be generally in the region of about six pixels. I know some people prefer it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I mean, play around and go with whatever works for you, but six pixels for me is where I want everything to be. Just to make sure that everything's saving, you want to come to the box here, at the bottom left-hand corner, and click Auto Save Preferences. You can have it so that you only save preferences where you click on it. If you unclick that, it now comes up with the Save Preferences box. I have everything so it auto saves. It's nice and easy, and I can always go back and change it later. So now you can see my vertex is really nice, clear size, which makes them very easy to select and start either deleting, moving around, whatever. Just going to undo those. So that's the first of my changes. The second thing I'm going to change is some of the world settings that's going to make this sort of savable uh, in a format that's going to be usable to me. So if you go over to the right hand side and click scene properties, you've got these various options here, including the most important one to me, which is going to be units. Now, in terms of units, you've got two major options here, either to have metric or imperial. Uh, I'd always recommend metric. Um, I mean, you might prefer imperial. I can only assume you're a sadist if you do, but um, some people might prefer working in that. But when you're going to be working in things where you might be changing things in millimeters, I find metric is going to be much more precise and it's easy for me to do the mental maths. Now, the one thing that some people try to change, and I actually don't ever bother changing, is this length, where at the moment it's set to meters. I mean, I work in millimeters. I do mostly relatively small models for things like Warhammer 40,000 or Epic or Adeptus Titanicus. And millimeters is the scale that I'm going to want. But it doesn't make a difference whether this is in meters or millimeters as long as it's in metric, because essentially you're just going to set the size when you take it into something for printing. And actually, I found it easier to keep that as meters and it causes me a lot less problems than actually changing it to millimeters. So I'd recommend you keep that as meters. Um, it just makes everything run nice and easily. And you just remember that you're writing things in millimeter sizes. So one of the other things I like to mess around with is the settings in the viewport shading, which you can find in the top right. 
And the most important of these that I'd recommend you changing is the cavity if you're going to be doing something for 3D printing. And what you'll see is that does is that really accentuates the lines on each edge and that makes it nice and easy to see when you're going to be adding things in and what's going to be happening when you're printing. So I'm just going to delete those and just give you an idea of what I mean. So if I bring in a cylinder, let's put that up to let's say 16 edges. What you can see here is you've got a nice clear idea of where these edges are going to be and what this is going to look like when it prints. Now if I just bring in another one, we'll put that up to let's say 32 edges. You can see that this cavity seems to really show off where you've got the more extreme edges and I mean depending on the size you're going to be printing it's either of these might be fine but I generally find that having a few more edges around the side is going to make things a lot smoother and it's going to look like the shape that I want to be printed. Now the other thing that I'd recommend that you never really get involved in especially if you're doing it for 3D printing is this shade smooth setting. So if you shade it smooth, it tries to get rid of all of the lines on the outside to create a smoother shape. And I mean, you can see that you can't see the line around the top. You can change that really easily by going to data properties, normals, and then click auto smooth. And you'll notice that's smoothed out most of them, but kept the more extreme lines uh, and the extreme angles. Now, the problem with this for me as someone that's going to do some 3D printing is that by using Shade Smooth, the moment the one on the left that's been shaded smooth looks like it's going to have a smoother outcome and looks like it's sort of perfectly round. But in reality, if I go back to Shade Flat, make sure it's selected first, you can see that actually it's going to be much more angular. And that is the problem with Shade Smooth. It can really disorient you and not let you show what the final print's gonna be. Now, don't get me wrong, I will use Shade Smooth if I'm gonna be showing something as a, a graphic, uh, bef like just to sort of put on a website or things like that. But really, you don't want that. And that's one thing to be careful of because there are certain objects that you bring into your, uh, sort of bring in as a mesh and they will automatically be smooth. So you, that's just one thing to be careful of. The final thing that I like to change in my viewport settings is I like looking at things in matte cap and typically this red color. There's no real reason for this other than if I'm going to be staring at a screen for a good three or four hours, it just seems to do or just seems to be a bit kinder on my eyes to have everything in this sort of nice matte red. So those are my settings. Let's move on to some of the add-ons that I like to have that makes my workflow a little bit more productive. So I'm going to start with some of the add-ons that are already included in Blender that are really, really useful to have. Now, you can get your add-ons again through the Preferences tab. And if you come down here to where it says Add-ons, you can collect, set certain things to be on and off. And I've got a lot of things set on automatically, but there are a few that I really want to highlight that are almost uh, a sort of no-brainer that you're going to want to have. So the first one is called Ball Tools. Okay, or ball tool, if you just type that in the top. Okay, so it's object ball tool, and you want to have that selected on. Now, this just is so good in terms of saving you time. It, it I almost can't, well, I could work without it, but it would just take me hours. If I just sort of delete these and bring in a cube, and let's just duplicate that. So let's say for some reason, I want to join all of these objects together. Now, if you use this without the add-on, essentially what you've got to do is you're going to be selecting on the object that you want everything added to. You're going to come over here to the modifiers property. You're going to add a modifier. You're going to add a Boolean. You want it to be a union Boolean. Okay. And then you're going to click on the object that you want to add to it. So I want to add that unit and now it's been added to it here. Okay, great. But I'm going to have to now that do that again, right? Click on the main object add a modifier, let's get another boolean, I want it to be union again, I'm going to click on that one, okay, and then let's say this one, I want to be deleted from the rest of them, so I'm going to come back here, okay, once again, add on, boolean, I want this one to be a difference, I want that one, oops, let's, I always find the dropper bottle, a sort of dropper thing, much more useful, you can, you can click here and select the cube, that if you know which number it is, I always find this a lot more easy, Okay, so we're going to have that, and that's been deleted off of it, but because we can uh, see, you can't see that, so I'm just going to hide that by pressing H. So, I mean, it's fine, um, 
but it's just a pain. So if we come back to this basic setup of objects, the reason that ball tools is so useful is it's just going to save me a lot of time. Let's say I want to add these two objects to this one in the middle. I can just hold down shift, select all three, and this is where having this as a green outline for the one that's selected is important because that's the one that everything's going to get added to. So for example, if I clicked on, press shift and clicked on this one, now everything will be added to that one. And, and while in this instance, that's not going to make a huge difference uh, at certain points, it can do. So I want everything being added to that. Because I've got ball tools on, all I need to do is press control and the plus on my number pad and everything has just been added to this. So now if I go on here, you can see it's done all the modifiers for it. And again, if I just want to click on this one uh, or click on this object and delete it from this, I can just press control minus and it's deleted it. It automatically hides it as well, which is really nice. So I can see exactly what's being done and you can see all the modifiers are there. It just takes seconds as opposed to there being this repetitive clicking of menus. And if I want to confirm that's done, I click apply all and just hide the things that I don't want using H, so I click on that one, that one, and that one, and now I can move this around. This is one object because I've applied it. So that's ball tools. Just it's already free with Blender. It's already part of it. Just activate it, and it will save you a world of time. The second of these add-ons that comes with Blender that is pretty much essential if you're going to do anything relating to 3D printing is the 3D print toolbox. So again, I'm going to come back up here into add-ons and type in 3D dash print. Now notice if you don't type in the dash and you try to type in 3D print with a space, it's not going to come up. So 3D dash print and here, so the mesh 3D print toolbox and that once you've clicked the box is going to add an icon on the side here, which allows you to go into the 3D print settings. Now this is I mean, I can't even express how useful this is. There are other bits of software that you can export your STLs into and have a look at, but I always like to do this first as a minimum. It just helps me deal with some of the larger issues that I might have. And essentially all you do is you click on an object that you want. So we've got these joined together, click check all, and it's gonna check that there's no errors. Now at the moment, there's no errors here. It's a fairly simple sort of mesh. Uh, let's just make an error so that we can sort this out so I'm just going to go into vertex mode and let's click K go into knife mode I'm going to click a bit here enter and then let's select that face and delete just the face so now obviously this has been manufactured but realistically when you start adding lots of things together you sometimes get these faces that accidentally get deleted and you might not see them very easily I mean once we go into vertex because the vertex is so large it's quite easy to see but if this is a really large object and you're zoomed out a lot, it's quite easy to miss. So let's click it again, click check all, and now we can see that there is something that's making this a non-manifold object. And for anyone that knows anything about 3D printing, you need your objects to be manifold for you to be able to print them successfully. Otherwise, bad things can happen when you start printing. Now, at the moment, that's not telling me much about it other than that it's there. But if I go into something like vertex mode, you can see that suddenly these become selectable. So you can click on them and it highlights where the problem is, which is really, really useful. Sometimes you won't see this because you're on the other side. I like pressing, uh, I like pressing shift and Z. Okay, which means that suddenly everything is see-through. Go to vertex mode, click non-manifold edge, and it's really nice and highlighted. And then I can sort of go back into it, shift Z. So it's not see-through. And then I can check where that is. Go into, let's say, face mode or uh, vertex mode. And I can, let's say, use F to fill that. And then suddenly I can check it all and it's not a problem. Now, if I just undo that, the other thing that I'll say that's fantastic about this is that once you do your check, it does have a cleanup button down here and you can click make manifold. Now, I just wanna highlight that sometimes this doesn't work and it can make things worse. So don't assume this is gonna do everything for you. This is normally my first go-to, I'll click it, okay? And normally it tells you at the bottom what it's done. So for example, this has added a face, so it's a plus one face, which is great. And then I click check all and see that it's all right. But as I said, sometimes this doesn't work and you're gonna to have to go in manually okay by going into vertex mode and seeing what's wrong
Now, overhanging faces, that is not something to be concerned about. Okay, all that means is that you've got some faces here that are facing the build plate and are gonna cause a problem if you were to print this way. So in this instance, you've got that face there, that face there, that face there. That's our four overhanging faces and they're literally flat or flat to the build plate, which sometimes can cause print problems. But realistically, if you're gonna do the printing, that's gonna be sorted out when you reorient uh, reorient it and add in your supports. So that's nothing to be concerned about. Generally, it's the first two or three actually, okay, and non-flat faces that are a big concern for me. Okay, those are the ones that I need to look at and sort out. So that is the 3D print toolbox. And like I said, essential if you want to do anything for 3D printing. Now the next of the add-ons that I'd really, really recommend isn't actually part of Blender natively. You have to download it, but it is free and it is really, really worth getting. So that is called Machine Tools with machine spelled with a three instead of the E. It's free, okay? Um, there is a version that isn't free called the Deus Ex version, which has some added extra bits, but Regardless of if you want to get that or not, honestly, the free version is just so important in terms of saving you time and it just does a million little things really well. Now there's two places you can download that. If I come down to the download location, you can one go to the Blender Market and if you download it from there, it is gonna cost you a dollar because there's a minimum cost on Blender Market for what you pay. But if you just go to Gumroad, it is free, you basically just click on standard, okay, and it comes automatically as £3.50, but you can set that to zero theoretically and just have that being free, okay, and you just click I want this and you'll download it. I would say it'd be nice to actually give them something for it once you uh, start doing this, uh, you, you realise how useful it is. What you need to do if you want to install that is you're just going to go to edit, then to preferences, click on add-ons and you're just going to click the install button and then once you've done that you will just select wherever you've saved it from and then you just select that you want it. Now <clears throat> what Machine Tools does is basically adds you a massive amount of just time saving. The main thing that I use it for and I'm not going to be able to have a chance to go into even a minute proportion of what it does but honestly just this one thing will save you all the time in the world is that when you're doing things with an object and you want to edit it, normally if I was selecting on this and I wanted to edit it, I would have to go into edit mode. So I'll come up here, edit mode. Okay, and then at the moment it's in face mode. And if I want to change it, I can go up here to be in vertex mode. You can also press one, go up here to go in edge mode. Okay, go back to here to face mode. Okay, now I don't want to be in edit mode, so I'm gonna go back to object mode again. Uh, it, it's all just a bit tedious and while it doesn't seem like a big deal when you're doing this 20 times in the space of like a minute it's really annoying what machine tools does is it adds in a pie menu and all you do is you click tab and it brings up this pie menu okay and it basically just one if i want to go into edit i don't have to call that up here I just click edit and it's going to be in whatever i was on last but more usefully than that if i press tab and go to the left, I'm in vertex mode, tab to the bottom and I'm in edge mode, tab to the right and I'm in face mode. Okay, and you see you don't even need to click, you just quickly you just jump between it. I need these vertexes, but actually I just want the edges between those. So let's go to the edges and now I've only got those edges selected. Okay, uh, back to vertex mode. Okay, maybe I want that edge, just maybe I want that there, there, there and there and let's deselect that. Okay, so I want that. Okay, oh, maybe I want the edges there. No, maybe I want the face that's there. Okay. Or maybe I could add that face to that face and I just want the vertexes. So it made a really quick way of selecting the vertexes instead of having to click every single vertex. It's it's so useful. Just that by itself is worth all the money in the world as far as I'm concerned. So really just get machine tools. It is such a benefit. And to be honest, that's just one of the functions. There's a million other little tools that they have and pie menus that come up. It, it's fantastic. I will probably do something a little bit further in the future as a video to talk more about machine tools. Um, but honestly, it's great. Uh, just get it. It's free. Now, the final add-on that I want to mention is one that you have to pay for. Um, it's called HardOps. 
and it is £38 when you get it bundled with box cutter. Do get it with box cutter. Honestly, you're going to want to use both of them. They are just fantastic in the terms of things they do. I will do another video later to cut by each one individually, but honestly, it, it's $38, and if someone, now that I've used it, told me that it was $100, I would pay it, and I wouldn't even give it a second thought. And that really isn't because I've got a lot of money flying around, it's just because it saves so much time and makes your life so much easier. Um, I will talk about a couple of things for hard dots, but like I said, this is, this is gonna cover nothing. I will do a video later. Um, if people are interested in it to sort of show to show some of the other things that it can do but essentially it just adds a lot of extra menus so for example just a really basic one a second ago when i was adding everything to this and sort of joining it all together even when i did it i had to come over here and click when click to the modifiers so if i just add in another let's let's add a cylinder this time okay and move that over here and if i want to add to that yep i've got ball tools now so that's great so i can just click Control plus and that's added it to it but at the moment that bit's over there okay and because this has not been done non-destructively i can start moving this around and then it will stay in that position okay but that also causes some problems like if i start moving this it will now not mesh in the place that i originally put it um, so, and I do need to come over here and click apply all to get that sorted. So if I just undo all that. Now, the first thing HardOps does is add a load of, en load of menus to do things. Now you can access this in other ways in some of these instances, but if I just press control and tilde, I can change my workflow from being at the moment, it's non-destructive. That means that it's putting all of these modifiers over on this tab on the right hand side, and I can change them and add to them later, and, and that's great. But sometimes I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to keep applying things. I know what I'm doing and I want it to just happen straight away so I can select destructive, go out of it and now just press, control, let's say do control minus this time and it's deleted it. Okay, it hasn't put anything over here. I don't need to say yes, I want to do it. Okay, it has just done it. Okay, and again, if I just press control A, add in let's say a cube, move that over to here. I want to add to this control plus and it's just done it now it is one object i haven't got anything over here to to faff around with it's just done it okay i'm going to go back out of that just so that i can change that so let's say control a mesh and i want to put in a cylinder but this time i might want to fiddle around with where it is i think i like it here i want it to be added so control plus but i want to be able to move this around and double check that that's exactly where I want it to be. So let's just select that. No, I want it a little bit, let's say, I want it a little bit along the Y axis. Now I'm gonna change it there, then I'm gonna apply it. So it just gives you that optionality. Really quickly, able to access it, I want to change things around. The other thing HardOps does is add in a menu that you can access by pressing Q and this gives you access to just a world of fun. Honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. There's operations that are in here, okay, that you can do, okay. You can add modifiers really, really quickly, okay. You can do some really nice things with arrays that you can't do if you just use the array modifier in Blender, um, which is brilliant, okay. And it does things like radial arrays. I'm gonna do a video on that uh, possibly next week at some point. Honestly, it's it's just so good. Um, some of the things that you can do on this, with uh, they're just they're just absolutely fantastic. I can't even put into words <laughs> how good this is as an actual thing that works. I mean, I'm just going to show one really quickly, just because I think it's absolutely great. So let's say I'm going to have a cube. I'm going to put it over, and I'm going to subtract this cube from this. Let me just check that I've got this as non-destructive. I do okay and I just want to have that and I'm going to press control minus so it's being subtracted and at the moment I can see this box okay I can see the cube and where it was which is nice but you know what I probably don't want that hanging around all the time so I'm just going to click H and get rid of it now <clears throat> that's fine but if I want to come back and edit this I suddenly realize I've got to go either go here okay click down okay it's cube four I need cube four so let's make that like something I can see, okay, 
And I mean, if I've got a million things on it, so I've added in like a load of other objects. Let's add in another cube. Let's put that one down there. Let's duplicate that, put another one there. Okay, and I've added, and I've added both of those to that. Okay, and they're now hidden, because I want them hidden. Okay, now suddenly I've got to work out which one, I've got three things here, which is the one that I want. Uh, it, like, I mean, I can click on it, okay, but it, it just becomes painful and annoying to try and find the different things that you've done and that you want to change if I just want to change one thing. So the key menu has this fantastic thing called Ever Scroll. If I just click on Ever Scroll, it highlights, well, that's one of my additions. In fact, that's the most recent one I've done. That's the next most recent, and then that's the third most recent. And if I click on that, then I can start moving that around. So say I want it there or there, or I want it scaled down so it's a bit smaller. And then I click off of it and it's done. Okay, say I want to go to one of the other ones. Okay, Oops. click on the object, Q, ever scroll. Let's say I want to edit this one. Okay, I don't like it just there. I want to just move it to over there. And again, it's done. It's it's absolutely fantastic just in terms of saving, like just minor things. Oh, look, I've noticed that's got that's going to print horribly. Q, ever scroll, find that one. G, let's move it to, along the x axis, just a tiny bit to sort that out. Done. Okay. And that's, I mean, just as a time saver is fantastic. And that's one of the most basic things, <laughs> the most, most basic things that hard ops can do. Okay, like I said, I'd, I mean, I'd have to do a video for hours to be able to do something that does it even close to justice for what it does. So that's, and that hasn't even gone into box cutter. So just for the sake of completeness, I'll do a really quick show of what box cutter can do. But I mean, again, this is not going to do it justice, but let's say I want to come over here. Okay, and I want to cut out an interesting shape. In fact, let's get rid of this and let's just bring in a cube. Let's say I want to do some sort of funky sci-fi light uh, so let's uh, exaggerate that on the Y scale a bit. So I'm just going to move that there because I just prefer it like that way. So it's on the uh, on the line. It doesn't really make a difference. And I want to make some sort of interesting shaped sort of light or feature that might go somewhere. So all I'm going to do is turn on box cutter, which is Alt W, and I'm going to click D. Okay, so I want to do an engon, which is that you can do boxes and cylinders and things like that. The engon is the one where I'm like, this is this is it, this is where it's at. Okay, selected that, go out of it, and all I'm gonna do is control, uh, sorry, is press, I don't even need to press control in the new in the new one, and I wanna do an interesting shape, and it cuts automatically, or sorry, automatically clicks to 15 degree increments. So let's do that there, and then another, let's do that there, and that's, that looks like an interesting shape. Okay, go down there, double click, and then I'm gonna, get rid of that shape okay and then I need to do something on the top so let's do this again so so there and look I can do it at the same angle because it's been clicking uh, so it's been sort of automatically selecting it down to there all the way down let's go around get rid of it and that's my sort of nice interesting shape that's going to eventually turn into, let's say, my sci-fi sort of light or something like that. So hopefully you found that a useful insight into some of the add-ons and settings that are available for Blender to try and make it a much more productive place for you doing 3D design for 3D printing. If you want to have a look at any of my designs, you can do so on CG Trader. Just type in artisans-of-vault and you've got all my designs there. And pretty much everything there has just been made using the tools that I've just been talking you through. So if there's anything that you'd like to know how to do or anything that I've covered in this that you'd like a video of in more detail, please just type it into the comments section. I'd be really happy to sort of hear what you guys would like to see and add in some extra videos on those particular topics. Also, if you hit subscribe and that bell button, then YouTube will inform you when any more videos that I'm putting out come out. Have a great day, guys.